Now, what I'll just go to first now, next, is a policy for development of the Pacific and Indian Ocean basins. This is a project which will probably give the United States one to two million jobs in the near future and many more over the period to come. And then I'll turn in conclusion to two other uh, cases of projects which I've developed with friends in government and in other influential circles in Ibero-America, some of you call it Latin America, and in Africa to give you a sense of what my overall foreign policy as president will be. Under conditions of the kind of growth in world trade to be fostered by my policies as president, there will be a rapid increase in trade to about $200 billion a year above present levels. Will be the Pacific and Indian Ocean basins. That is, freight being moved by 50 to 100,000 ton freighters, modern fast freighters, will flow through the constrictions from the North Atlantic, the Caribbean, the South Atlantic, to the Mediterranean, into the Indian and Pacific Ocean Basin. And a great volume of trade will be transmitted between the Indian Ocean Basin, dominated by India, and the Pacific Basin. That will be the character of world trade in the period to come. This runs into certain problems indicated on the map. First of all, to get from the North Atlantic or South Atlantic into the Pacific, except by the Cape Horn, we have to go through the Lock Canal, the Panama Lock Canal, and that is simply not adequate. To move from the Pacific Basin into the Indian Ocean Basin, we have to pass presently chiefly through the Straits of Malacca. One tanker sunk in those straits, and the straits are out of business. I shall identify for you briefly five of the major projects which I have proposed uh, be adopted as part of U.S. Pacific foreign policy. Two of these are straightforward transportation and development projects. One is the second Panama Canal, the other the Kra Canal project so-called in Thailand, the development of a water system in India, the development of the Mekong development uh, project, which is already engineered, ready to go, and assistance to China, or the offer of assistance to China in the development of the proposed Hangzhou Peking Canal, which all work is already beginning on. Some years ago, a leading figure in Japan went to the president of Panama to propose a new sea level canal through the Isthmus of Panama. There are several routes available for this purpose. This is agreed upon. Mitsubishi of Japan is prepared to proceed with it. I propose the United States government support politically and otherwise the implementation of this immediately. The next project, the Thailand Isthmus Canal, sometimes called the Kra Canal, is something whose feasibility was worked out in terms of engineering by a group of businessmen and others in Southeast Asia and the United States before 1973. Now I've just discussed with people in Japan the idea that the development of the sea level Panama Canal and the development of a sea level canal through the Isthmus of Thailand ought to be done for economic and related reasons as coordinated projects. At last report, some circles of Japan agree with this opinion of mine and are considering it. And this would, with the agreement of the government of Thailand, which is personally considering this project, I would offer U.S. cooperation to implement it immediately. It's of strategically vital importance to the economies of the entire region as well as to ourselves. In recent years, most Americans know very little about India. At least, what they know is not very accurate. India is a nation of 700 million people. You will have, during the course of this decade, an urban labor force of about 60 million people. That labor force, industrial urban labor force of India, is greater than the entire populations of major industrial powers today. The, India ranks fourth, approximately, as an industrial power in the entire world today. India ranks third or fourth in the number of professionals and scientists in the world today. India is a great power in the Indian Ocean, Ocean region. And our policies toward India 
in recent decades have been insane. Now, India has one of the world's greatest supplies of water, together with Pakistan and Bangladesh, in the form of the great river systems and underground water systems, coming out of that vast, high range of mountains to the north. This water, if properly managed, and if some of it were pumped up into the plateau toward the south of India, would mean a revolution in terms of the economic output of India. India, by some time early in the next century, could produce more wealth than the entire world produces today. I will have nothing to do with the kind of China card policy associated with Henry Kissinger and Zbigniew Brzezinski. However, we must have a rational policy of cooperation toward China. We must provide China with that cooperation which is not contrary to our interests, which is in their interests, and which corresponds also to their desires. Now, one of the things that has attracted my attention is the fact that China is working on and committed to reopening and enlarging a great canal system that they once had. This internal canal would provide China with improved, low-cost inland water transportation and would also move water from the water-rich south, where people die of flooding periodically, to the water-starved north. It should be the policy of the government of the United States, and would be my policy as president, to offer cooperation to China in matters of this type, if China wishes it, and of course in other matters which are analogous. The Next I want to show you uh, samples from my work on the projects for development of Ibero-America, which some of you call Latin America, and Africa. I've been working with governments and other influential circles in both these uh, two continents since 1975. And again, as in the first case of the Pacific Indian Ocean Basin projects, these are things that are more or less ready to go now as soon as we have a president who is willing to enter into cooperation with these countries to make them happen. Uh, in the case of Latin America, I'll just indicate the few highlights of a consolidated economic proposal for the development of a Latin American common market, which I issued at the request of influential circles in Mexico and other countries during the summer of 1982, uh, policies which are now more or less accepted among leading circles of government and elsewhere throughout the continent. In this connection, Henry Kissinger has been, of course, the fellow who's been directly opposing my policies and pressuring and threatening governments and others in Latin America to try to distance them from my policies. In the second case, uh, Africa will come to that in due course. There has been in the past three years a catastrophic collapse in gross domestic investment, trade, and output per capita throughout Ibero-America. This collapse has been caused chiefly by the policies of Paul Volcker and Henry A. Kissinger. 